When you look at this, right, what does it actually tell you? You've got this x equals 1, 2, 3, 4. Can someone tell me what's the, what's the meaning of that? Max, do you want to kick us off? What do you think that indicates for us? Yeah, fantastic. See, uh, this x here, we're going to replace it with 1, 2, 3, or 4, depending on. Now, that's the next question. Depending on what, remember the previous question we looked at, what are the different options? It's 2, 3, 4, and 5, yeah? In this case, it's saying these are the only possible x values you're going to get. The other, any other values, like x equals 5, that kind of thing, they have a probability of 0. They're never going to happen. So far, so good? All right, look at the table underneath. Complete the table of values for this probability distribution. As Max suggested, when x equals 1, what's the probability of that particular score happening? When I substitute in? 1 tenth. One tenth. Very good. When x equals 2, the probability will be 2 tenths, and then 3 tenths, and then 4 tenths. So that's not, it's not super complicated. Um, conveniently, 1 tenth plus 2 tenths plus 3 tenths plus 4 tenths, what does it add up to? It adds up to 1. So we've got everything. Okay, so far so good. Now, I want you to read this next part super carefully for me, okay? Part B, it says, hence calculate the mean of the distribution. Calculate the mean. I'm just going to write that down. Can I ask you guys, how do we normally calculate the mean? If I wanted to calculate the mean height of this group of people, you guys, right, what would I do? Yeah, go ahead. Add the scores, add however tall each single one of you is, and then I'll divide by, in this case, um, 16. 16 people. Make sense? Add them all up, then divide. Okay? Can anyone see why there's kind of a teeny bit of a problem looking at how do I try and do that with this? For example, how many people scored one in this situation? A tenth, how many of them is that? I don't actually know, right? Like this doesn't tell you anything about how large the group is. This could be 16 people. It could be 1,600 people, okay? Now what that means is, if, just imagine with me, right? Imagine we had, what's the simplest, the smallest number of people that you can imagine fitting this? Think about it, you've got a probability of a tenth, two tenths, two, 10 people, right? If you had 10 people, that's the smallest group of people that could fit this, right? So of those 10 people, how many got a score of one? One of them. How many of them have got a score of two? Two, two? two of them. And then three? Three. Okay, and you get the idea. So here's our ten people, right? How would I calculate the mean of that group? You told me before. What am I going to do? Add them all up. Add them all up. So I'm going to go uh, add, 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 etc. And then I'm going to divide by, in this case, yeah, the amount of people, which is ten. Okay. Now, I want you to look closely at the previous page when you calculated expected value. Go back and have a look at that, right? When you calculate expected value, look at your first line of working, not the answer. Look at your first line of working. Did you notice this is exactly what you're doing? You see that? Right? Like that over 10. Do you know you've got decimals in your thing? Like, um, what were they? 0 0.1, 0 0.2, etc. That's... 1 out of 10, and 2 out of 10, and 3 out of 10, and so on, right? So when you add all of them up for expected value, the mean is actually what you're calculating, okay? So can I ask you where you've written down mean equals, I'd like you to write the mean equals the expected value. They are not the same thing, but in this context, they are the way we calculate this same value, okay? Can you go ahead and work out what the expected value is? Go ahead and calculate it for this distribution. Okay, I know there's at least one, but who else has an answer? Yep, did you get three? Fantastic. Okay. Now, because I think you're starting to get into the rhythm of this, I'm just going to show you how we go from here to the next thing. What's the next thing they ask for? 
calculate the standard deviation. So there's not a straight line from expected value to standard deviation. What's the thing we've got to work out in between? Variance, very good. Once we've got variance, we then take the square root and we'll get the standard deviation. So this is what it's going to look like. Okay. Whoops, wrong one. Sorry. That's the next page. Ugh. There is our expected value, which you guys told me was 3. Thumbs up. And then here is us calculating the variance and then taking the square root. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is um, imagine rehearsing through with me calculating the expected value for this particular question. So what I want you to do is you go blah, blah, blah. You get 0 0.95. So just type in 0 0.95 and then hit equals. Okay? So this is what your calculator is showing you after you've put all of this in. Yeah? So far so good? Okay. Pay close attention. Top left hand corner, press the shift button. And then the button you're looking for after shift is one of the small grey buttons on the bottom left hand corner. It says RCL which stands for recall but above that it says store. Very good. So when you press that, store, um, you can now choose any letter that you like for this to be assigned to. I don't know what your calculators have. Do you have an E? In, um, like it's written in red. You got an E? I use E for expected value, right? So I'm going to put that in. And if you did it right, your calculator will say this. Sorry. It'll say answer, and then there will be an arrow, and then whatever letter you chose. And I chose E. Okay. Now the reason why this is helpful is you would not believe how many people get this right and they know exactly how to do this, and guess where it goes wrong? Just when they're pressing buttons, because it's just so many things to press, right? So, yeah, did you want to ask? Could you repeat the last one? I will, yeah, absolutely. You've got 0 0.95 or whatever the answer is in the display. It has to be in the display. So I've got 0 0.95 there in the bottom right-hand corner, so don't clear it. Shift, store, and then press any of these little buttons that has a letter over the top. So I've got A, B, C, D, E, F, X, Y, M. And you can choose whichever you want. Um, I chose E, which is above cos. Does that have you got E above cos on your calculator? Yep. Uh, depends on. D uh, just yeah, that that'll do. Just choose that. You've got slightly. Some people have. They don't have E and F. I don't know why. Different models, something like that. No. So once you've pressed Shift Store, just press the letter straight away. Um, and then when you want to use that letter, if this is what you're asking, um, if for example. See this part here? I'm going to use the expected value, yeah? In my calculator display, I'm going to write 0 0.2 bracket negative 1 minus, then to get back to my E, I say alpha E, and that's how I get it. Okay, alpha, and then you can see the letter appear in your screen. Okay, so just make sure whatever expected value you get, you just use the same one over and over again. Make sense? They tell you for a particular probability distribution, it's got this expected value. And then if you read the table carefully, then this is what you would do if you wanted to calculate the expected value. The real question, the actual question they're asking is, what's A, what's B? Okay, that's the question, right? Now, look carefully at this because it looks kind of like, mm, I'm used to just pumping the values in, getting my calculator, and then it giving me the expected value. But they're, they're posing this question in reverse. They've given you the expected value. It's another thing they want to work out. So the first thing you can say is, this thing here, I already know what it's supposed to equal to. So this is an equation which has an A and a B in it. You can simplify out and you'll have something that you can do which will relate A and B together. But it's not enough to solve. You've got one equation and two unknowns. You need an equation for every single unknown. So there's another equation we need to form that connects A and B. Have a look at the way that I've written it, right? See my 0 0.4, my 0 0.1, this 0 0.1. What are they? What do they represent? They're, they're, they're going to be probabilities, aren't they? When you're working out expected value, like 2 is not a probability, yeah? It's one of the discrete random variables. The 0 0.4 is the probability. So A and B are also probabilities, right? When you get the whole distribution, what are the probabilities supposed to add up to? 1, right? So if I take the 0 0.4 and the 0 0.1 and the A and the other 0 0.1 and the B, when I add them all up, I should get a full one. Now, when you've got two equations together and they're working at the same time, what do we call that? Simultaneous, Simultaneous equations. You know exactly how to do this. It's just dressed up in some statistics language. Okay? 